Well, welcome. If you're watching this video, hopefully if you watched the two previous videos, you're, if not, you're going to want to go back and watch the one where we talk about introducing this section, dealing with uh, working in a, filling out a table. So that way you have a visual to know what's going on here. The second video was a short video just to summarize what we learned from that table. Now this video is going to take it one step further. This video is going to take it, we're going to talk about, well, what happens if we deal with an equation looking like this? Now, if you recognize that we have a square in here, this is in what we call a quadratic form. Now recall that in a quadratic equation, which is in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, a, b, and c can be any number as long as a doesn't equal 0, because then it's not a quadratic anymore. If we have a situation like that where x is replaced then by an unknown value of a trigonometric equation, the resulting equations like we have in example 3a, we say that it's a trigonometric equation with quadratic form. Now there's two ways you could get your solution. We could, do our, we could get our solution by factoring, which requires a little bit of work in reviewing how to factor, which I'm not going to take the time to do. The other way that we could find the solution for x is to use a quadratic formula. So that's the way that we're going to approach these problems is by solving using the quadratic formula. Now it's very important to recall that to use a quadratic formula, our equations have to equal zero. If it doesn't equal zero, we cannot use a quadratic formula. The quadratic formula, again, is the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c. And it's all of that that we just did divided by 2 times a. Now, for this problem that we're working on, it is not set equal to 0. So I'm going to start by getting everything over to one side so it's equal to 0. So we're going to leave this 2 sine squared theta where it's at. And I'm going to add sine of theta to both sides. So then I get plus sine of theta. And I'm going to subtract the 1 from both sides, so I get minus 1 equals 0. Now this is the same as, if you want to look at this as being an equation, it's the same as 2x squared plus x minus 1 equals 0. So sometimes it might be easier for you to transfer it as an equation so you can recognize it as something that you've worked with in the past. Otherwise, you can leave it in the form that it's in. You just want to recognize what the a, b, and c are. So our a in this case would be the 2. Our b would be 1, because it's 1 sine of theta. And our c would be negative 1. So let's plug those numbers into our quadratic formula. And instead of saying x equals, since we're using, instead of x, we're using sine of theta here, I'm going to say the sine of theta equals. And then we're going to plug these numbers in. So it'll be negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 squared, which is just 1, minus 4 times 2 times 1, all of which is divided by 2 times a, so 2 times 2. Okay, so now we're going to simplify. And the way that I want you to do this is I want you to do this in parts. So the next step is to find what's called the discriminant, the piece that's underneath the square root. So do not type the square root in yet. I just want to see what's the square root. What are we taking the square root of? And, uh, oops, this is a negative 1. The value for C is a negative 1 there. Missed that. But negative 4 times 2 is negative 8 times negative 1 would be a positive 8. So we would have 1 plus 8, and 1 plus 8 is 9. So we get the square root of 9. All of that is going to be divided by 4. Now the square root of 9 is 3. So we get negative 1 plus or minus 3 divided by 4. So here's what we have. We have the sine of theta equals, if I take negative 1 plus 3, I get 2, and 2 fourths reduces to 1 half. And then I take the sine of theta, I find the other solution. Negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4, and negative 4 divided by 4 is negative 1. So now I have to figure out, well, what's my values for theta? Well, if I take the inverse sine of 1 half, we get... Uh, if we leave this in radians, which, we're, which I'll do, well, let's talk about that. Let's, let's leave this one, let's be exact, find the exact solutions in this one. So the inverse sine in degrees for this would be 30 degrees. But if I'm going to change that to radians, I'm going to multiply that by pi over 180. When that reduces to pi over 6. So I would say that one of my solutions for theta is pi over 6. To find my other solution, again, I take the inverse sine of negative 1 half. Well, that's going to be 270 degrees. But again, oops, let me do that purple again. But we get 270 degrees. 
We have to convert that to radians by multiplying it by pi over 180. When we reduce that, we get 3 pi over 2. So our other solution is going to be 3 pi over 2. Now, we're trying to find all the solutions between 0 and 2 pi. So recall that when we're working with the sine function, we have to subtract each of these from pi to figure out if there's any other solutions. So I'm going to take pi minus pi over 6. Now you can't do that because we don't have a common denominator, so I have to change this to be 6 pi over 6. And 6 pi minus 5 is 5 pi, so we get 5 pi over 6 as our other solution. Now with the 3 pi over 2, we're going to take, whoops, we're going to take and subtract that from pi. Again, we have to have a common denominator, so I'm going to change this to 2 pi over 2. But when I subtract these, I get negative pi on top over 2. Negative pi over 2 is outside of our interval, because the interval has got to be between 0 and 2 pi. This is negative, so it's outside of that interval. So these would be our solutions for part A. Now, in part B, it says find the general solutions. The general solutions are going to be, we set each of those solutions equal, or we add it to each of those solutions 2 pi n. So we pi over 6 plus 2 pi n. I'd get 3 pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. And our last solution will be 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n. So we have three solutions when we find the general solution to that equation. So that's a little bit more complicated problem. So you just recall, recall that you have to use the quadratic formula. Plug the information into the quadratic formula. Once you find what the sine of theta equals, we have to find the inverse sine of those values to get the angle measurements. But if we're asked to find the answers in radians, we have to convert them to radians to get the exact solutions. And then we can find to see if there's any other solutions by subtracting each of those from pi. You just want to make sure that they fall within the uh, particular interval. Well, with that bell, why don't we end the video there? So with that, good luck now as you work on your assignment.